Okay, so today I'll be showing you how to put together a home PC. And this is a pretty basic case. So you have um, CD-ROM drive slots and hard drive uh, slots. First thing you need is a motherboard, and this is the ASUS M5A97. So. In the box, you have the motherboard, a faceplate for the back of the computer, and uh, serial ETA cables for the hard drive. The next thing you need is a CPU, and this is the AMD uh, FX6100. It's a 6-core CPU, so it's good for multitasking. So in the box, uh, you have a uh, heatsink and you see the gray stuff in the middle uh, that's the thermal paste that's already applied and of course the CPU when you're putting together a computer it's very important not to touch any of the black chips that are on the uh, motherboard or any other uh, component I'm talking about these black chips here they're NAND chips uh, the reason for that is your fingers uh, might have static electricity on them so uh, you shouldn't touch it so if you do put uh, static electricity on them it will actually uh, burn them out so to solve the problem you can buy a uh, grounding wire that you attach to your wrist and attach to the case but since I don't have one uh, what you can do is just touch any metal surface to discharge all the static electricity from your fingers. To put the CPU in, first uh, lift the tab on the CPU slot. And remove the CPU from the uh, case. Be careful not to touch any of the pins. Okay, so you line up the corner or the yellow triangle on the corner with the triangle that's on the CPU slot and gently drop it in. And do not force it in, uh, it may bend some of the pins. So it's seated nicely, and then you can push the tab back down. Okay, the next thing to do is to mount the heatsink and fan, and to do that, you place these latches um, onto these two hooks on either side of the CPU. So gently put the uh, heat sink on top of the CPU and hook one side first. Okay, so when one side is hooked, you can hook the other side. And then you can pull the latch to secure it. Next, uh, plug in the uh, CPU fan plug into the motherboard to figure out uh, which plug it is. Um, it does say that this is the CPU fan uh, plug, but if you don't know which one, you can go to the owner's manual. So in the owner's manual, I have a diagram and it tells you exactly uh, which plug is which.
You know, the wire seems kind of long and it's dangling all over the place and you can actually tie it into a loop. Usually RAM these days are sold in pairs and most of the time on motherboards they also work in pairs. It's called dual channel. It's actually faster if they work in pairs like that. So if you install two RAM you should put it in install it into uh, either the two blue ones or the two black ones. If you put it into one black one blue they will work in single channel and it won't be as fast. So either two blacks or two blues. And to install the RAM you need to pull back on these tabs You have to line up the notch with the uh, slot. And when you have it uh, seated there, uh, push down on it until the two latches on the sides pop up. Next we install the back panel plate, so line up the plate with how the motherboard would go in. And just make sure it's seated properly. The next thing is to mount the motherboard. And to mount the motherboard you need some special screws. And these are called um, standoff screws. First they screw into the case and then another screw holds it down, holds down the motherboard from the top. And right now I have six standoff screws mounted in the case. And there are other holes to mount standoff uh, uh, screws, but I don't need them because you have to look at the motherboard to see how many holes it has and what arrangement it's in. If you look on the motherboard, there are actually six holes. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I have to keep this pattern on the case. So when I put the motherboard in, it will only have those six screws holding the motherboard. And make sure you don't put any screws on the other remaining holes because they may be touching the bottom of the motherboard where uh, you can cause a short. Okay, to mount the motherboard, start diagonally and slowly slip it into the back panel plate. And once it's properly seated in the back panel plate, then you can drop the um, right side of the motherboard down onto the screws.
and check uh, to see that it's properly seated on both sides. And just watch out for these little uh, springy pegs here that help hold the uh, panel in place. And make sure they're not caught uh, while you're slipping the motherboard on. When you're mounting the motherboard, you'll find that it will be kind of difficult to line up the holes with the screws um, easily. That's partly because there's some spring action uh, caused by the back panel pushing back uh, towards the motherboard. So the way to screw them down is um, you push on the motherboard as much as you can, uh, not too much force, until your screw lines up and put one screw in first and then move to the other end of the motherboard and do the same thing, push the board until the holes line up with the bottom standoff screws and then put another screw in but don't tighten them down uh, completely because you want some room for movement so you can line up the other holes so once you get uh, two or three lined up and with two or two, two or three screws in then you can put the remaining screws on and then tighten all the screws down. When you tighten the screws down make sure it's only snug uh, not over tightened. Uh, you could break the board. So The next thing we need to install is the hard drive. This is a 2 terabyte hard drive and that's 2000 gigabytes so that's lots of storage. Um, so on this drive I will be installing uh, two operating systems. So I would be installing Windows 7 and uh, Linux. And to do this, uh, what I've done to the hard drive is split it up into three partitions. So one for Windows, one for Linux, and the other partition, which is the biggest, is for storage. To mount the hard drive, you simply slide it into one of the slots and it's held together by four screws. Don't tighten them until the other screws are uh, screwed in partially. You can now This is the hard drive cable, or serial ATA cable. So the hook end will go to the hard drive, and the flat end will go to the motherboard. So there's only one way it will go in because the uh, plugs are notched. So there's six plugs there, six of the uh, gray ones. So you can plug it into any one of those. The next thing to install is a DVD writer. So to do this, you need to pop out one of these uh, plastic covers so you can slide it in. So they just come out by pressing this tab in and then it will just pop right out. And then you can slide the DVD drive in. The DVD drive also uses serial ATA cable, so you can install that. Uh, MSI R5450. It's a basic video card. So it doesn't have a fan on the heatsink uh, because it uses a very little amount of power so it doesn't heat up very much. Uh, this is a 
probably about a $30 video card. Um, it's enough to play high definition video, play basic games, or even play um, higher end games but at lower settings. The video card was, uh, actually has a rebate, so after rebate this card is only $15. So this video card has three plugs, or three ports. One is an RGB, a regular monitor plug, HDMI to your uh, LCD TV, and uh, DVI uh, for your LCD monitor. As you can see, um, because there's a notch there, uh, the video card is actually on a slant and it won't go down uh, or it won't go flush against the frame and it won't slide down properly and the reason is um, it's being held held up by uh, the port screw And now I can push this uh, flush against the frame and it will slide in easily. And remount the screws. Now you can mount the screw on the video card. The next thing to do is to connect all the wires for the front panel. To do this, you need to plug all these wires into that white panel at the bottom there. The manual will tell you exactly which pin um, belongs to which plug. The first wire is going to be the reset switch. You have the power switch. And next is the hard drive uh, LED light. Is the uh, power light. So next is the USB ports on the front panel. So these days, uh, the USB wires from the front are built together. There's actually two of them. So it's built into one plug, and this plug goes in one way only, because there's one pin that is actually sealed. So on the motherboard, there are three USB two ports, so any one of those three will work. Next is the audio cable for the uh, speaker and microphone on the front panel. After installing all the wires, you can tidy up by uh, using some zip ties. Now we will install the case fan. Next, we have the power supply.
to install this power supply, uh, look for the screw that is slightly off. And on the power supply, you'll have three screws out on the corners. You got these three here. And then there's one that is slightly off the corner. So you look for that on the case. So and that's the hole that is slightly off. Now we will uh, plug in power cords to each device. So the first one we'll plug in is the motherboard's uh, main power supply. And that's this piece right here. So there's only one way you can put this in. Each pin is um, sort of coated with a different shape. So it'll only go in one way. And make sure when you're uh, pushing the plug in, you should support the motherboard because on one edge of the motherboard, there may be no screws to support the bottom. Now we'll plug in the power supply for the uh, CPU. It actually has two plugs, so they only fit in one way, so you can't mix it up. Now we'll plug the power into the DVD-ROM and the hard drive. These plugs only go in one way so you can't mix it up. and plug in the case fan power. Now because my video card is um, lightweight and it uses very little power, it doesn't require a separate power supply, so it will draw power directly from the motherboard. But with nicer video cards, um, ones ranging from seventy to three four hundred dollars they would have a separate uh, port for a uh, power plug and normally it would be up on top of the screen up on top of the video card and it would require a plug like this and this is a PCI Express power plug so it has uh, six pins on the main plug and two on the side Now because my video card is uh, lightweight and it uses very little power, it doesn't require a separate power supply, so it will draw power directly from the motherboard. But with nicer video cards, um, ones ranging from 70 to three, four hundred dollars they would have a separate uh, port for a power plug, and normally it would be up on top of the screen, up on top of the video card and it would require a plug like this and this is a PCI Express power plug so it has uh, six pins on the main plug and two on the side now the cables are neatly tied as best I could and now it's ready to go 
So after putting the computer together, I realized that it wouldn't post. So um, I checked the RAM, CPU, video card, everything seems to be working. So um, I guess the motherboard wasn't working, so I returned it, had them test it, and found it to be uh, defective. So uh, they didn't have the same board, so I got the uh, revision 2. So let's hope there's no uh, issues with this one. We'll put the cover back and screw them in. So finally I got everything back together. So everything's running. And I mentioned I was going to dual boot the system with Ubuntu Linux and uh, Windows 7. the Ubuntu and the Windows 7. So we'll open up Windows 7. Okay, so let's log out and uh, open up Linux just to see. So let's uh, go into Ubuntu Linux. So all your stuff's on the side here. Applications. Screen switcher. Looks pretty neat. So there's an alternative to Windows 7 if you don't uh, want to spend 100 bucks, 150 bucks on Windows 7. Uh, Ubuntu Linux is free, of course. And so is uh, OpenOffice, or this one is LibreOffice. Everything looks pretty much the same, functions really well. Firefox, Internet, uh, uh, Internet Explorer equivalent. There we have it, dual boot system, 